So we're doing this series on busyness. Busyness. And uh, tonight we're looking at seeking to seek and live in God's wisdom. Interesting that it uses those two titles, seek and live. It's kind of like sometimes we, we even ask for and look for guidance, direction, wisdom, and then we don't do it. And so I think it's great that they combine those two. So it comes from the book of James. That's way over there in the back, just a few from the end. We're going to read 1 James 1, 1 to 5. Who might like to read? Well, Hi, everybody. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, that, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ingrudgingly, and it will be given to you. Okay, and then verse 17 says, <clears throat> Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from God of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Shifting shadows. Hmm. So, the scripture talks out about making a connection between life's challenges, perseverance, or endurance in that translation, and joy. What do you think the author's trying to say here? First of all, you notice that he's writing to the Hebrew Christians. James had a real outreach to he was the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. And so he's writing to them. So I say that because we have to remember from the Hebrew way of thinking that if things are going well for you, it's because you're doing all the right things. And if things aren't going well for you, like we talked about last mm -hmm. week, it's because you're messing up. That was just the, the thing, and it just doesn't always work that way. So the study person says, is there a connection between life's challenges and joy? What is the author trying to say? About what we just read? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In my personal opinion, um, I'm just basically just saying, ask God, and you have to trust without any doubt whatsoever. And if you're going to receive the wisdom that you need, period. And I think also in this first part that James says here, I love the honesty. There are going to be trials. There are going to be challenges. I get so upset. You know, we were out in West Virginia, and there's a preacher on. No matter what time you turn the TV on, you can find a preacher. And so many of them were, were doing this. You know, if you just accept Jesus, your life will be perfect from that minute on. Well, I guess I'm a heathen. <laughs> because it's just that it work that way all the time. Now, what does make a difference is you have a hope beyond yourself. You have a hope that things are eventually going to work out in the right way. But I think we all go through times of perseverance needed and joy. This is not on the sheet here, but what helps you hang in when things are not going well? Faith. I live on faith. Faith. Remembering that God has always come through every other time before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I encourage people, I don't do it, I encourage people to journal. And especially when, when make a note of when God has come through. So the times when we're still waiting, you can go back and see that God's been faithful. And there's no reason for God to change that faithfulness. And I think it's important to understand that that. <coughs> Robin Roberts says everybody's going through something. You know, everybody's going through something. And the good thing is we're not all going through all the bad at the same time. I know Joanna and I talk about this. You know, it's good that neither one of us are we're seldom sick at the same time. We seldom have financial stuff at the same time. We seldom have family stuff at the same time because man, you need that balance. And not just in a relationship, but in the people that you hang with to see that balance there. I love this question. How will God respond to us when we ask wisdom from God? The verses that she read. How does he respond to us? Mm -hmm. Well, he gives it to you if you ask him. But you got to believe, though. Like a thousand percent. <laughs> I like the fact that James, again, remember who he's writing to, these Jewish Christians. 
And they're used to having to earn everything from God. Earn everything. And I love how he portrays God giving wisdom. In the Message Bible it says, um, you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father who loves to help. You'll get this help and you won't be condescended to when you ask for it. Ask boldly, believing without a second thought. You ever ask somebody for help and they kind of went, oh, how could you be so stupid? Now they may not have said that, but you pick that up, or why don't you know that? And a lot of times people think that God's going to be like that to us. When we ask for help, God is going to, you know, say, I've told you that a hundred times. I put it in the book. What's the problem here? And I love how James says that it's not given grudgingly. They're not condescending to. What do we need? Something we need to do is to really work on our image of God. Our image of God, because many of us grew up with a, a punishing, angry, I'm going to get you, God. And other of us grew up with just kind of this benign old man sitting in the chair watching the world go by. And it's kind of interesting over our lives how we develop this concept of God. And a lot of things plays into it. What are some things that might affect your image of God? Sometimes it has to do with the kind of preachers you've had. The kind of leaders in your church you've had. You know, for the longest time, I thought God must be an old lady with blue hair. <laughs> That's what all the people in my church growing up, all those ladies. It might also have a lot to do with your parents. With your parents. I struggled, struggled to accept God as father because I didn't see my dad as much of a godly person. Um, it may have to do with what your friends have said. What kind of things you've done. Today we're running into more and more people who don't have a concept of God. They weren't like most of us who were put in church whether you wanted to be or not. They kind of came through that generation where people just kind of went if they didn't want to or didn't go if they didn't want to. And so that concept of God figures into this asking for wisdom. Sometimes we tend to think we know more than God. We won't say it that way. Or sometimes we think we have a better or a plan B that might be better. So God responds to us giving us generously and abundantly. And when I read that, some of the notes with this book about generously and abundantly. Now what's the difference between generously and abundantly? Freely and a lot. Hmm? Freely and a lot. Freely and a lot. Without fault. Without fault. Without, you know, uh, generous. I could be generous and tell you, you need some money here, I'll give you five dollars. Because that's what I've got. But wouldn't it be cool if you needed some money and you asked somebody and they had about $100? You know, that's the difference between generous and abundantly generous. Also, there's no shame in asking. There's no shame in asking. I love, one of the things I love about this church is we'll pray about for anybody and anything. We pray about critters. <laughs> we pay, pray about people we like and don't like sometimes. We pray about situations. And that's the difference between knowing that God's willing to hear it all. We're willing to hear it all. And then also, um, we're not put down for asking or needing from God. If you need wisdom, if you need understanding, ask for it. So now the question I come up with is, why do we not ask God for help and for wisdom? Sometimes we think that we can... Uh, trudge through things ourselves and, you know, things will work out and we'll do it on our own. Mm -hmm. We were taught he's not one to give you everything and anything, but he is. Mm -hmm. We've been, this, our generation has been raised yeah. that stiff upper lip, grit your teeth, get through it, and figure it out. Figure it out. <clears throat> when I was just a little kid, my sister was born when I was six and a half years old. And, um, I needed something, and my mama said, you're a big girl now, you can take care of that. Now, I don't know what it was, I don't remember what, but that became my mantra for my life. Mm -hmm. I have to take care of me. And so we do that even sometimes when it involves God. I think we really miss out a lot on that. And this says a lot, the question is, what does it say about God's character? We sort of danced around that. But God, I believe, somebody prayed one time when I was early at MCC, 
and it was uh, Reverend Renee McCoy, and she said, God is standing on tiptoes, leaning over to pour out blessings on you. And that's a picture that stayed in my mind. That character of God, like you said, Lord, being so willing to give us so much, and freely, without shame, without having to jump through hoops, without problems about it. James 1, 6 to 8, which we didn't read, describes what many of us have experienced. We may ask God for wisdom and then fail to trust that God will guide us. Another way the text describes this is that we don't receive, we don't receive the wisdom we ask for or even thought God is giving it generously. We may fret about getting it right and fail to pay attention to the guidance we're sensing. Or we may decide to go our own way after seeking God's will and way. Verses 6 through 8 says, Ask boldly, believing without a second thought. People who worry their prayers are like wind-whipped waves. Don't think you're going to get anything from the Master that way, adrift at sea, keeping all your options open. And from the NIV, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That one should not think they will receive anything from the Lord. That one is a double-minded person, unstable in all he does. Hmm. What makes us so wishy-washy? That was my term for this. You know, they can, they can use all these terms, wishy-washy. First of all, why... And we said this about COVID, we want to tough through it on our own. Do you have any concerns when you ask wisdom that you're getting it from God and not from your own hand? Do you ever pray about something and, and you're not sure if it's God or if it's you yeah, trying cause to? It, it's because you're just sitting there and you say, okay, please do that, you know, you know, take care of whatever. And all of a sudden you're, it's in your mind that it's you talking that it's going to be okay or whatever. But... I mean, you don't know. That could just be him using your voice inside your head, you know? And you're like, okay. So, oh, yeah, God, you take care of that. Let me tell you how to do it. Yeah. Let, yeah. Me, let me give you my thoughts. Okay, this is what you got to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, there are other times when it's just so clear. Uh, another pastor friend of mine, Dolores Berry, used to say, if you really don't want to do it, you think God's waiting you to do it, probably that's it. Because it's something that we would fight against or not want to do. That's often what God is leading us to do. And so here, I think that James, again, is being very honest. You know, if you're going to throw your lot in with God, if you're going to ask God for help, then do it. Don't be waffling back and forth. And we know how that is with people. They say yes, 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 and then say no, do no. Or they are good for a little bit, and then they flake off. And the good thing is God's not like that. God's not like that. Somebody turn over to James chapter 3 and read 13 through 17. Okay. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and evil in every evil practice. But the wisdom that connects from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Okay, just take it from the message point of view. If you want to be counted wise to build a reputation for wisdom, here's what you do. Live well, live wisely, live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk, that counts. Mean-spirited ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise isn't wisdom. It's the furthest thing from wisdom. It's animal cunning and devilish conniving. Don't miss any words here. 
<laughs> Whenever you're trying to look better than others or get the better of others, things fall apart and everyone ends up at each other's throat. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life and is characterized by getting along with others. It's gentle, reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessing. Not one hot day and not one day hot and another cold, not two faced. Hmm. That sounds like uh oh T V right now. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, I try to tell Kelly and uh, Sandra, I try to be careful with this, but when I hear somebody tell me how wise they are <laughs> and how smart they are, not just the current, but if you come up to me and you tell I just meet you. And you begin to tell me how wise you are and how spiritually mature you are, and my mind I'm going, uh uh. <laughs> because if someone's wise, yourself of it. if someone's wise, if someone's kind-hearted, you'll know it. Mm-hmm. You'll know it. They'll be a T-shirt. But a lot of times right. they don't know it. Yeah, that's, it's that's just the their way that they are, and they project it to other people, and they know it. But if you're do it the right way, you don't have a big head about it. Mm-hmm. You you might not even realize that you're that good of a person to a lot of people. You know, the scripture reminded me of that, that passage in Micah about how we live and walk and walk humbly with our God. You know, love mercy. <clears throat> but the question says, how does the scripture describe the wisdom that comes from God? I think it's real clear. It, it, first of all, it, it's so evident. And it's gentle. And it's true. And it's not boastful. We, we misconstrue sometimes wisdom and education. Wisdom and the letters after your name. And it's not to say that you can't have wisdom and have letters after your name, but wisdom is, is something totally different than whatever learning you've had, whatever school you've had. Um, wisdom's not something you can teach. Wisdom, you can help people understand it and develop it, but you can't give somebody a list of things to memorize and say that will make them wise. I love how this contrasts God's wisdom with envy and selfish ambition. Say that again, please. How does it contrast God's wisdom with envy and selfish ambition? I love how in the Message Bible it says uh, you start thinking you've got it all right and everybody starts fighting and everybody's in everybody's throat. Get a group of people together and put a couple of people in there who think they know it all. Mm. We've been in groups, we've been in families, we've been in situations like this. <clears throat> and if you're not careful, who's going to take over the conversation and the argument? Yeah. Those people that think they know it all. And I find it just absolutely delightful to sit quietly until they wear themselves out mm-hmm. and then say, have you ever thought about <laughs> and bring up the other thing? Because God's wisdom is never going to beat you over the head. God's wisdom is never going to stomp the foot and hammer the table. It just doesn't happen, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> she pointing fingers. I said, are you? I asked her what she talking about. Me. <laughs> well, you are not going to sit quietly, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 please hear me. I'm not talking about being super passive either. I'm talking about the fact that sometimes you have to let those people wear themselves out before you can put in. What happens if you try to jump in with some wisdom? They're going to talk right over top of you. Go right over. Go right over. It drives you crazy. (laughs) What are some of the subtle and not so subtle ways that envy or selfish ambition can add stress and unnecessary busyness to our lives? You have any, anybody have an example of any time in their life when someone threw ambition into or envy into their situation? I think any time that you're trying to prove yourself or prove your worth just so everybody else can see it, mm-hmm. um, A, it does take a lot of time and you will be busy, but um, that creates internal strife to start with. But I think that just sets you up. Mm-hmm. Anytime you're externally driven like that, all kinds of crazy stuff starts. And sometimes we get super busy because we think we have to cover it all. Not, not speaking to anybody 
Victor, mm -hmm. we, <laughs> we have to cover it all. And then when somebody else comes up being envious or ambitious, it can get to be a problem. One of the things this lesson, the series is teaching me is to look at what's the core of my busyness. When I find myself saying, oh, I'm so busy, which doesn't happen very often, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but in the past, when I would just find myself frantically busy, why? Was it stuff I really needed to be doing? Because this wisdom that comes from God tells me that it's going to lead me to gentleness. It's going to lead me to um, wisdom that comes from heaven is pure. No, not like gloves. Pure means focused. Focused. Pure. Peace-loving. Considerate, submissive. Oh, you ever have trouble with that word, submissive? Wives, be submissive to your husbands. Yeah, no. That's I used not. to. Ah! But you know what that submissive means? Walking side by side. side. Working together. Not three steps behind. Let me write that down. Yeah. What does that mean? Submissive. Side walking side, side by side. Working together. <laughs> not three steps behind. You won't hear that on TV preachers either. Full of mercy and good fruit. God is not going to lead us, it's my opinion, God's not going to lead us to hurt somebody. God's not going to lead us to be mean to somebody. Now, there are times when we have to call it, speak the truth to it, but there are ways to do that without being hurtful. Without being hurtful. God's wisdom is impartial and sincere. Mm. Impartial. That's really hard sometimes. Because I don't care whether you're a parent, a teacher, or a friend. You have your pets. You have your favorites. I do not know a parent who can honestly and truly, really sincerely say they don't have a favorite. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm fortunate with, the, with critters because I've only got one, so he can be my favorite. <laughs> but um, God's wisdom is impartial. Now, that means it's not based on how much money you make. It's not based on how you dress. It's not based on anything except finding God's true, pure purpose for that. Impartial, and what was that other word? Sincere. Mm. If you are speaking, if I'm speaking like I'm speaking from God's wisdom, I better really mean it. Because one thing I think most of us can pick out real quickly is insincerity. Insincerity. Because sometimes it's a big deal. Sometimes it's not. I had a, a library director in Portsmouth who was legally blind. And when he came in and said, oh, would you look nice today? Mm -hmm. No, I was kind of, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now that's a silly example of, of questionable sincerity. But if we're going to be speaking God's wisdom and speaking from saying, I've prayed about this, this is what God's led me to share with you or to do, we need to make sure that it's God leading us, that it's impartial. Some of you, I can see your brain mm -hmm. <clears throat> going with that. Are you looking at me? <laughs> yep. The other question says, how might living in God's wisdom help a person experience God in the busyness of life? How would this teaching about wisdom help us with our busyness? To me, when some wisdom happens to somehow land in me uh, about something maybe about which I felt I hadn't had any, all of a sudden there's clarity. Mm -hmm. And it's like everything is streamlined. Mm -hmm. And it's like what's important stands out. And everything else can just, okay, that's not such a big deal. Whereas otherwise, you're juggling everything constantly. So there's that, I, I don't know, there's something about God's spirit always has clarity in it. This, Anytime that wisdom is there, I like that clarity and streamlining idea because, again, most of our busyness is often involving peripheral stuff. Or we're making it extra hard on us, making it extra hard on ourselves. Talking about your washing machine, your laundry. You know, you can make laundry be really hard. If you, if you like, don't take things out soon enough and they're all wrinkled and you have to go do the little bin. Or if you forget to put the fabric softener in, you have to do a little dinger now. Um, you know, we get, but you know, laundry is not that big a deal. I do it every Monday for us. So 
you know. And I <laughs> mean, and you know, it's, it's, it's but it can you can make it really hard. You can make it really hard. Uh, most anything we do can be made hard if we're scattered. If we're scattered, I don't cook a whole lot, but I try to when I am doing that to do it rather methodically. Otherwise, something's burning, something's boiling over. I didn't put something in. I made fudge one time, and I forgot to put the vanilla extract in. And I realized it after I'd already put it in the pan. So I sprinkled around the top, stirred it up a little bit, you know. But it made it even busier doing that way. So God's wisdom. Fuck is scattered. <laughs> Don't forget the ingredients. <laughs> God's wisdom does give us clarity. Now. Unfortunately, for most of us, we've spent so much time spinning around before we ask for wisdom. And sometimes when we get it, we kind of go, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. So what my concern for you this week and for me too is when I get so busy, I need to stop and look and see, what am I doing to make it crazier? What am I doing to make it crazier? Most things, there is a simpler way to do it. So the question, the last one is, what wisdom do we need to ask for at this time in our lives? And I, th I see this applied to our church also, not just to individuals. What wisdom do we need to have for this church and how we move forward? I was talking to Patty Monday, and she said, you know, for a little church, this is the givenest church. And she started naming off things like the food pantry and the Thanksgiving baskets and the smoke alarms and batteries. And the hats and gloves for food pantry people. She says, a lot of big churches don't do any of that. And we have to be careful that that doesn't turn into busyness. Mm -hmm. That it has wisdom behind it. And, and I think my assessment is that it has been wisdom involved in those things, even if you do pick strange movie shows. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, find that wisdom because if we get so busy doing stuff, and we, we've always, Sandra will tell you, we're always getting requests to help with something mm -hmm. or do something. And sometimes you just have to say, hmm, that doesn't meet our goals. That doesn't fit in with our theology. That doesn't fit in with where we're headed. And be able to have the wisdom to say, sorry, no, we can't do that. Otherwise, we spend all the, the energy and the money mm -hmm. and the time mm -hmm. doing things that don't matter. Mm -hmm. Don't matter. Wisdom. So when you need wisdom this week, what should you do? Ask. Ask God. Yes. I'm so afraid somebody's going to say, call the preacher. That's <laughs> <laughs> God. God will tell you to call the preacher. Yeah, you can call the preacher. <laughs> say her, yes. I asked somebody one time, I said, what do you do if you're reading the scripture? It just doesn't make sense to you. And somebody said, you know, check a commentary, I check a different translation. I one person said, I just call you. That don't always work. <laughs> Loving God, help us this week to moderate our busyness if it's just spinning <coughs> wheels. Help us to seek your wisdom in every decision that we need to make. Let's all help us to live as people who truly are and want to be wise. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.